car based part that I used to hate this car. I used to think this car sucked. I used to think, oh my god, I've never caught to drive the Camaro Z28 in this game. This thing is so bad, it's so slow. Just to prove that this thing does have a lot of high-end torque, notice how slowly it's accelerating here. I'm pretty, I passed the mid-range or the mid-gears, so now it's... Now it really has a trouble accelerating. And most of its power is mid-range, which is actually really good for it, the car's intended use. This intent is intended to be a corner carver or a track duty vehicle. Not something you do on an open road, no drag races here, it's because it'll lose. Because it doesn't have a 54, it doesn't have a 396, it's just got a little 305 TPI. But man, oh man, in hand, look at that. And if you want it to drift, you can let it. If you want it to go flip over jumps, you can do that too. I wouldn't recommend doing that though, because it put all these ugly scrapes in the paint. That's another problem with this car, with its suspension. Uh, it, it corners really well, don't get me wrong, and look at how flat this thing is when I'm turning. See how little body roll there is? That's that's pretty impressive. Look at that. That's not much body roll. However, it does have a bit of a problem with the diving board. Watch this. What you just saw was the car lurching forward. I call that diving. That happens with the cars that have a very high front brake bias. Now, this isn't bad in and of itself. Just you have to factor that in. And like almost all cars in this game, this car doesn't have anti-lock brakes. So, if you're watching again what's going to happen here. I'm not, I'm not going to touch the steering. See what happens when my brake's locked up? My car slid. This is why you want to do threshold braking. You brake just enough to start slowing you down, or just brake almost to the point when my brakes lock up, but not quite. It takes a practice to do, but man, it really helps if you take the tight turns. Another fun thing is running intersections and weaving in between the cars as they pass. It's quite useful online because traffic doesn't really give a crap about you. In single player, the traffic's a lot nicer. They actually sometimes stop for you. And stuff like that. Oh boy, there we go. And actually, what's nice about this car, if you don't want it to do it's very predictable. You can tell when the rear wheels are beginning to lose traction because the car will start to rotate very, very slowly to the right or the left. See that? Right back on the gas. You don't lose much speed in the turns of this car. This is a, really the best cornering muscle car I've ever ridden. See here, I'm letting it spin, and I'm back in control. That's what I like about it. It's a great car to learn how to drive in. It's actually pretty competitive, too. I mean, you can beat some of the fast cars like the Shelby GT500 and the Challenger SRT8 in the turns. On the straightaways, yeah, of course, they'll, they'll kick your butt. But if you're on a really short track, you're going to be the one on, on top. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> I've had a lot of those calls in the Camaro. I love this car. You just call me a bitch. That was very nice. Oh, this is anything but a female dog. This is a freaking alpha dog. I can't call it a German Shepherd because it's built in the USA. I don't know. I don't know what kind of dog to call it. That's another fun thing to do. Look at all that crap. I'm going to pretty fast. See? I'm not quite gunning it through here, very close. I'm about, probably about between 90 95% throttle, and then I'm going all the way as I come out of the turn. So, this is a great car. It doesn't take too much practice to get good at cording with it either. It just comes out of vectoring properly. If you know what vectoring is, it involves using pressure sensitive analog sticks, or in my case, triggers on a controller, so you have much better throttle control. You know, this car actually isn't too bad to drive from the cockpit. My only issue is, it's a lot wider than it seems. However, looking at the copy, let's determine a couple things about this car. For one, it's got a very, very, very low red line. It's on 5,000 RPM. But man, it, it picks up when you rev it high. I call that using launch control. It's a very fun car. But just to prove that this car is more grip than you think. See? Tail didn't wag at all. See, look at that. Dang, that's almost good. You know, for a car that has such a high drift rating, this car really, really, really grips. It's a very nice car. I love my T28. Now, I haven't gotten into the curviest roads that you haven't even seen how well this thing corners. See, look at that. See, you don't have, you can't really flat put it through turns with this car. You have to let off the gas and the vector. But, you get right back on the gas. I just let it off a little bit there. I was not releasing the trigger very much at all. Sort of tell you that all the driving that I do in this game is with an Xbox 360 wired controller. I wouldn't be able to do an 
hate the things that I'm doing here, but just to keep one. Because you lack precision, you lack... <laughs> Look at all their faces. <laughs> Some of you may remember earlier in this video that I said this car is a lot of fun to take into the turns. Well, let's just put that claim to the test. After a quick roll and burn out. Woo, baby! For a little 305, this thing really, really eats its tires up. It's a lot of fun. This car is actually pretty good on the dirt as well because unlike cars like the Shelby GT500 and the Viper ACR, it doesn't have too much wheel spin off the line. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean here. We'll stop right here. Now, I'm not going to vector this at all. Look at that. Nice and smooth, just a little bit of tire chirps. You will be amazed at what this car can do. I just got to find a really curvy road. This is baby stuff. I'm not even taking my finger off the front trigger. I'm keeping this baby full of the floor. I'm also going uphill, so I'd want to do that anyway. Oh, that was close. You gotta be careful of cross traffic. They're crossing ahead of you. Oh yeah, look at that. Sorry about that. I, I, I just have Oh yeah, there we go. I just have I just have so much fun driving this car. It's very, very rewarding. I mean you really get the sense that you can take any short track, you can take any turn. Here's another fun thing, S curve up here. Or that's an increase yeah, it's an increasing radius one. Look at that, look at that grip. And I'm, I'm staying on the gas pretty well here. I'm not gunning it, but... I got, I got some throttle going on. God, this car's so fun. Now let's take it onto the dirt. This one is really interesting. Here, you don't want to use as much gas. I wouldn't give it any more than half throttle, unless you're on tarmac, on one of these off-road routes. Because then you start spinning the tires and start to really ruin your traction. Let's, let's do another one. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah! Now yeah, let it drift a little bit. So that's what's fun. You're, with this car, it's very, very forgiving to drive. The car, it, it really gives you the choice. Cut this one a little bit wide. Cut this one a little bit closer. There we go. You can hear me vectoring too. You can, you can hear me applying a little bit more, a little bit less throttle. I don't usually gun through here. There we go. This is fun stuff to practice on. There we go. Here comes the power. I love the exhaust. You know, for a car that's as slow as this car, I'm not going to lie, this car is pretty slow at the top end. That engine really makes it sound faster than it actually is. And I like cars like that. It's it's interesting. It, it, because it makes you think you're going faster than you actually are. I'm only going like 100 miles an hour. You know? This car sounds like it's doing a lot more. So you got to be careful. See what I mean by the throttle back? I gave it a little bit too much gas there. The rear wheels just lost traction. That's because these are really tarmac type performance stars. These aren't all season tires. These are probably Michelin's or old Pirelli's or Firestones. These are definitely not off-road tires. Another thing to note about this car, it doesn't have much ground clearance, so do be careful in going off jumps. Yeah, I think I, I, think I stacked one here, so I'm going to. But this isn't a car to do jumps with. This is a car to attack really tight turns with that stuff before. Now, you can do jumps if you're just screwing around, but seriously, there are much better choices for stunts. I mean, Dodge Ram 3500, that'll easily take jumps. See there, I just barely would have bought it out. Oh, God, this ride's so low. But you see, the, the low ground clearance is a double-edged sword here. For one, it makes me bad at jumps, but it also helps this car turn really fast and really hold its grip. Look at this. Look at that grip. Woo, baby. I'll let it go loose a little bit. Gotta find some more twisty roads. Oh, that was a Maserati I almost said. I said earlier that driving from first person isn't very easy with this car. Well, it isn't. It, it's not easy at all because the car is a lot wider than it actually appears. I'm surprised I haven't hit it. Ooh, it's also harder to gauge your wheel spin because the only way you'll know if your rear wheel is losing traction is if your rear end starts stepping on. You can't see your wheel spinning. Yeah, there I'm. Up. Here I'm. Here I'm letting it step. Up. Woo! And brings it back. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. That it was, Tanner. That it was. I can't deny that. I love this car. Alright, let's go back to third person here eventually. I do like what they did with the cockpit views, though. Holy cow. They really did a good job with this car. I I'm so happy to have it in the garage. And if you're wondering how we got it to the black color, you just go to your garage, select the vehicle, exit garage. If it's not the color you want, go back to the garage, go back to Chevrolet, hit select vehicle. In this case, the Camaro Z28. And then you go to exit garage. You just keep doing that until you get the car that you want. Why am I driving first person? Oh, there we go. Let's step out. Step out and bring it in. 
That's pretty fun. God, I can't get enough of this car. Also, I like how the rims got a little bit of gold spray paint on them. Out of coat, I like to say. Sorry. That's what I think about jumps. You don't want to take them too fast because if you do, you, you bounce and then your wheels lose traction and it's just a big mess. I go just enough to get some air. I just put the car right over it. I mean, this is when I'm driving seriously. I'm just screwing around. Oh, yeah, I'll just flat the through these jumps. I mean, I'm not hesitating there. The brakes, it's a lot tighter than it looks. I mean, the reason why I'm driving so well here is because I've done this before. I'm no stranger to these roads. Is this an S curve? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's do an S curve with a really tight turn up here. Watch this. You're gonna, you are going to be amazed. Look at that. Oh, that's tight. But the Camaro can do it. It's more than up to the task. And yeah, I'll, I'll let it wag its tail a little bit here. To let it off. You see how easy it is to spend hours and hours and hours driving a car like this? It is so fun. Oh, it's pretty tight. Oh man, it's a fast road. You're going downhill, tight turns. This is where this is the car's natural habit, the tight turns, the crazy apexes, the S turns, the hairpins, all that stuff. 40 miles an hour, yeah, because a good way to judge your car's realistic top speed would be looking at the speedometer inside. See, I'm just creeping past 140. Definitely slowing it down here. So I'm going to need to use this straight away up here to get some speed. So just kind of listen to this car rev, though. It's so fun. It's a really nice experience. It's like having a little automotive orchestra in your ears. Just because it's got a small V8 doesn't make it a crappy car. I mean, I think it's an amazing car because it's not so front heavy. Ah, drop the car forever. Okay, here we go. Up shift into fifth gear, finally. There's very little top end. Less than I thought. Short. Yeah, see, I, I'm just barely pushing it past 140. I mean, the car's struggling at, at 140 and up. I'm actually losing speed going down a hill. It's pretty pathetic. There's another place where I can go to test stuff, so I'll just follow this road for a little while. You can see how it does going up hills. See, it's not bad. You know, the engine definitely has pep to it. I'd be lying if I said it didn't. But it's not something like a Shelby GT500 or even a Crown Vec. It'll, it'll really throw you back and make you say, wow, I didn't think this car was that fast. There you go. Take a little wide. Okay, there's gear three. Gear four, one of those. Like, I can't, I'm not counting the gears, I'm just guessing. It's either gear 3 or gear 4, because I know it holds gear 4 until about 120 miles an hour. Then it upshifts to gear 5, and then you got the whole top end there. Okay, yeah, I'm going to start the top speed right here. Here we go. Let's get around this truck. There we go. It, it's pretty sad that I memorized most of the gear upshift points here, isn't it? It's okay to say yes, I, I'm a bit dirty here. At least with this car. I love this car. I want to know everything about it. Come on, upshift already. On the freaking highway here, let's do something with it. Okay, here we go. Now it's now it's moving. Yeah, at these speeds, you really wonder if this is really the same car you were driving earlier. I've gotten to going a little over 160 before, but that's not easy. I'm gonna try doing it again here. Let's see what happens when we get past 140. It must be speed going or something because it starts going right back down. And then it starts coming back up towards 140. So you, you can really only breach the 140 mile per hour limit going down here like what I'm going to do here. See, I'm going to breach it. Whoosh. But as soon as that slope ends, watch what happens. See? So, you really shouldn't use this car for a highway race. You will get raped. However, what you should use it for... Ah! Tight turns like that. Now, that's something you could not do to Shelby GT500 and the Crown Vic would have a really hard time with that. The Vic's a lot heavier. It could probably hit the wall or something. <laughs> so, final tips. Don't lock the brakes all the way unless you have to do a panic stop, like here. Well, let's say a car crashes in front of you. You shouldn't have your, your wheels lock up because that really impedes your cornering. So watch what happens when I don't lock my brakes up. See? Just a little bit. Just a little bit of tire squeal. That's all you should hear at the worst. I shouldn't even hear my tires screeching when I'm braking. And you think with a car that's as modern as this one, at least have ABS as an option. But, you know, I'm not going to whine about that. I'm not going to whine about it. I like this car. It's a challenge to drive at the limit, believe me. But, 
it builds gradually. It's not a car that's overly difficult. It's not a car that you'll just lose control of one day and crash into the wall. No, it's a very controllable car. It's a challenge, though. I, I, I really do mean that. It's hard to be up on the cars with this sometimes, especially if it's on the highway, because you don't have much top. But on the short tracks, oh my god, this thing reigns supreme. So it's not a fast you can take these starts. You, you, you won't drift it unless you wanted to. So, thanks for watching this very, very, very long review of the 86 Chevrolet Camaro C28. I hope this gives you an insight on just what this car can do. Hopefully I gain a couple of fellow Camaro fans. I better have, otherwise I'm just wasting the team a little bit of my life this. So, happy driving, happy racing, safe stunting. See you later.